childhood is a big one, but does not approach is a source of sorrow. That means that if I go, I'll become the source of sorrow. Hello, my name is Ashley Ogbe. Can I ask you to please open your Bible very quickly to Matthew chapter 13. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 13. Hmm. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I read from verse 1 very quickly and I'll go to the interpretation. Hallelujah. It says, that same day, Jesus went out of the house and was sitting beside the sea. But such great crowds gathered about him and he got into a boat and remained sitting there while all the throng stood on the shore. And he told them many things in parables, that is stories, by way of illustration and comparison. Hallelujah by way of illustration and comparison hallelujah let me just begin by saying something yeah many times and i can tell you most times god will not speak directly god will use things around you to get your attention to try and get things across to you and he will use things that you're familiar with. And if you pay attention and you stay with him, are we together? And you then pursue him and you seek him with all your heart, then he will explain those things to you. But usually and quite often the Lord will just speak and just point. It could just be a bird flying. And the host will just cause you to, see, to, to just hear something. It could be something on your plate it could be anything but he wants you to stay attentive and then seek him and yearn for understanding and then he will break it down so the bible says that god will speak and use what parables stories by way of illustration and comparison saying a sower went out to sow and as he sowed some seeds fell by the roadside and the birds came and ate them up other seeds fell on rocky ground where they had not much soil. At once they sprang up because they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they dried up and withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them out. Other seeds fell on good soil and yielded grain. And some a hundred times as much as was sown. Some sixty times as much and some thirty. The Bible says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear, be listening. Let him consider and perceive and comprehend by hearing. Then the disciples came up to him and said, why do you speak to them in parables? And he replied to them, to you it has been given. Everybody said, to me it has been given. To know the secrets and the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it has not been given. So every time the Lord is speaking. There are always two types of hearers. Those who it is given and those who are not, it is not being given. But you see it is you by being somebody who is a disciple and is committed to Christ. That it will be with time that will determine whether or not. Hallelujah. You were one of those who was given. It says, for whoever has spiritual knowledge, to him will more be given. And he will be furnished richly so that he will have abundance. But from him who has not, that is, has not what? Who has not what? Well, been given spiritual knowledge. 
Okay, not natural knowledge, but spiritual knowledge, spiritual insight. Hallelujah. Remember this morning, one of the things that we learned was this. Except a man be born again, he cannot recognize, he cannot perceive, he cannot even, it can, he can't process the things that are of the spirit. Because what is born of the spirit must also be what apprehended and appropriated by that which is born of the spirit. That which comes from above can only be received by that which is born of the spirit. So very often, okay, are we here? Very often, okay, it is, it, is, it is such that God will be downloading, but unless you have the spirit of God within you, unless your spirit man is sensitive enough, you will not be able to get anything. And so it is possible that this morning you can be here, but say, not me. Hello, say, not me. You can be here, at the end of the service, you leave and you get nothing. It is very possible. And so two people will be in the same place. And yet, they will hear the same message. One person will leave and say, I don't even know what happened in church today. Another person will leave and say, God, I give you all the glory and all the praise. Because you know what? You changed my life today. At the very same place where God is changing lives and transforming lives. Others are saying, I don't even know what happened. Because the issue is your own heart and your spirit. So the Bible says, watch this. It says, this is the reason that I speak to them in parables. Because having the power of seeing, they do not see. And having the power of hearing, they do not hear. Nor do they grasp and understand. In them indeed is a process of fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, you shall indeed hear and hear, but never grasp and understand. And you shall indeed look and look, but never see and perceive. It says, for this nation's heart has grown what? Gross, fat. So where was the problem? Where was the problem? Pardon? Men's where? Hearts. Men's hearts. The issue was in the heart. And so the Bible goes on to say, it says, For this nation's heart has grown gross, fat and dull, and their ears heavy and difficult of hearing, and their eyes they have tightly closed, lest they see and perceive with their eyes, and hear and comprehend the sense with their ears and grasp and understand with their heart and turn and I should heal them. But blessed, let's read together verse 16, but blessed, happy, fortunate and to be envied are your eyes because they do see and your ears because they do hear. Truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous men, men who what? were upright and in right standing with God, yearned to see what you see and did not see it, and hear what you hear and did not hear it. Hallelujah. That is, I count it all a privilege that you are hearing this word of God today. Hallelujah. Count it a privilege. You see, because how you access and how you approach God will determine how you will live. If you come with an attitude of, mm, what, what are they going to say today? What are they going to preach? And you did not prepare your heart to come to receive anything, I guarantee you will not receive anything. There was a time I said to the Lord, it seems like people are not getting me. The Lord said, don't think too highly of yourself. People didn't get me either. You know, but the Lord said to me, it depends on a man's heart. Have you noticed that in the same school, somebody will go get first class. In the same school, somebody will go and drop out. In the same school, let me tell you what is interesting. Okay. I wanted to, uh, 
okay, they, they've told me I should be careful, but I want to say this so that will not be. You see, let me tell you an interesting thing. I wanted to get JJ to start guitar lessons. I was looking for a place. The place I found to take him. Somebody said to me, ah, don't bother, go there. It's useless, nonsense place. The, the man doesn't know what he's in. I've tried blah, 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 blah. Ran the place down. But I just said, let me see, take. But I, I pulled out my own, forget it. I said, okay, it is well. I took my son there. The same man helped him to get distinction. Am I making sense? The same person. Meanwhile, if I had gone by the report, are you listening? Eh? I was told, forget you, don't bother, go there. The man, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't, ran the man down completely. You know, by the time my own went and got, I, till today, he's still going there. So where was the problem? Was it? Pardon? Thank you very much. If I tell you what they told me about you, eh? in fact, I will send that memo, should I allow you into any church in London? But thank God, see the way I love you. Who we know is the same person. Am I making sense? The same place, the same person, the same man, are we together? Yeah? Now, some people will be in the same class. One student will be getting what? First. Another person will be getting last. The, the one that got last, we say the teacher is a useless person. The one that got first will take uh, present and go and give the teacher. Say, I appreciate you, teacher. You know? So, this is why everything depends on your what? Heart, your spirit, your attitude. Let me give you a better explanation. Just, um, I, I won't use anybody because they will say that pastor is, Jesus died on the cross, isn't it? To his left, there was somebody, isn't it? To his right, there was somebody, isn't it? Yeah? The day he was dying, huh? the same Jesus, naked on the cross, dying, crucified. One person to his left on that day went to hell, isn't it? Another person on his right, what? Went to heaven, isn't it? Whose fault was it? Was it Jesus' fault that the guy went to hell? No. No. Do you know, each of them had exactly the same opportunity. Right there. The same opportunity to make heaven on that same day. In fact, them being crucified on the same day with Jesus Christ was a blessing. One person saw somebody who was, who is this useless person? Guess what? He lost it. The other person saw, ah, this is Savior and took it. Sorry, was it Jesus' fault? No. Hmm. Father, thank you. So the Bible says in verse 18, listen then to the meaning of the parable of the sower. Okay? I'm extending something here. All right? There's a reason why this is very crucial. Okay? The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. 1 Thessalonians 2 and 13. Okay? Hallelujah. All right? Let's read together. It says what? And what? Let's read together. We also especially thank God continually for this. That what? When you received the message of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as what? The word of who? 
mere men, but as it truly is, the word of who? God. Which is where? Effectually at work in you. In who? In who? Who do what? Believe. Exercising its superhuman power in those who adhere to and trust in and rely on it. So what is the key here? What is the key to the word prospering in your life? Pardon? Your heart, your spirit, your attitude to it. Same time, same moment, one person was making heaven. To the left hand side, another person was going to hell. How close can you be? How close can you be? Except on that day of Pente on that day. In the same place where Peter was, the same place was Judas. The same place where John the beloved was was the same place where Judas was. So whose fault was it that Judas hanged himself and died? Was it Jesus? No. So the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, or chapter 2 and verse 4, Hebrews 2, 4. What does it say? Hebrews 2, 4. Okay. Sorry. G give, me, give me 4, 2. Sorry, not 2, 4. 4, 2. Hebrews 4, 2. Let's read together. Let's read together. For what? Indeed, we have had the what? Glad tidings. The gospel of God proclaimed to us just as truly as they, the Israelites of old, did. When the good news of deliverance from bondage came to them. But what? The message they heard did not benefit them because it was not mixed with what? Faith. With the leaning of the entire personality on God. In absolute what? Trust and confidence in his power. Wisdom and goodness by those who heard it. Neither were they united in faith with the ones, Joshua and Caleb, who heard and did believe. The same what? Word came. The same word from God came. And it is one thing to blame Moses. It's one thing to blame this one. It is this one. It is this one. You know, Gio taught us something. He said, have you ever seen a champion that blames anybody? Have, have you ever seen? No. Who always blames or always has excuses? Is the loser. Losers always blame. They must blame someone. They must always have an excuse. Gio said to us, a champion never blames anybody. A champion never, ever makes an excuse. Oh, it's because this, oh, it's because of, this is why, uh, you know. Derek Prince says one of the key things about the Adamic nature is that it always finds somebody to blame and accuse for its own failings. Always. The difference between Adam and Jesus is that Jesus took upon the responsibility himself, isn't it? Adam passed the blame to, Lord, is the wife you gave me. The wife was spoken, say, Lord, is the snake that you gave us in the garden. You know. Why is this scripture important? You know why? Because at the beginning of the year, are we listening? Yeah? At the beginning of the year, everybody hears exactly the same prophetic word. Are we listening? Yeah? At the beginning of the year, 
everybody <clears throat> hears exactly the same prophetic word. And after hearing it, it is now your heart and your attitude that would determine what fruit will be born out of it. It is easy to assume that, oh, it's because of this. Oh, it's because of that. Oh, they did this. Oh, they did that. Oh, they didn't do this for me. Oh, it's because of this. It's because of that and so on and so forth. If, if they had done this, they would have da, 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 And we make excuses left, right, and center. But the Bible is very clear that <clears throat> it is because of the heart of the hearer. The heart of the hearer will determine everything. So the Bible says we mingle it with what? Faith. Are we together? Okay. Now, the evidence that a man has heard God and that he believes God. I'm going back to this thing. The evidence, the same people. Can I share something with you? Yeah. How many people heard that the God was going to destroy the earth with flooding? How many people heard? Everybody on earth at that time heard the message. And guess what happened? God did, two, did one thing that accomplished two purposes. How many years did he give? How many years did he give for people to hear it very well? Thank you, Mr. Joshua. God gave 120 years eh, for it to sink in. How long does it take to, for something to sink in? You didn't hear it in year one. You didn't understand it in year two. You didn't quite get it in year three. And up to what? 120 years. To allow it to sink in. In order so that men will hear, repent, turn, and what? Make preparation. The same warning that came to men in, in the book of Genesis, okay, hear this, was also the same warning, the same word that came to the people in the time of what, Jonah, isn't it? Okay, what was the evidence that they believed the word, the prophetic word in the book of Jonah? Pardon? They acted, repented, turned, they went to fasting, okay, and showed the evidence that they believed the word. The same judgment was prepared for both the people of Nineveh and also people of the earth. So what is the evidence that you believe the word you heard? Hello? What is the evidence? It is your response to what that word has brought out to do so. So what will happen is this. There will be, let, 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 let me show you what the Bible says. Hebrews 11 verse 7. Hebrews 11 verse 7. Hebrews 11 7. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 verse 7. Let us read together. <clears throat> the Bible says what? Prompted by what? Faith. Noah being what? Forewarned by God. Concerning events of which as yet there was no what? Visible sign. Took what? Heed. <clears throat> and did what? Diligently. Not the word diligently. Diligently and what? Reverently constructed. And prepared an ark for the deliverance of his own family. And the Bible says, by this, that is his faith which relied on God, he passed judgment and sentence on the world's unbelief and became an heir and possessor of righteousness. That relation of being right into which God puts the person who has faith. Hallelujah. Okay. What was the evidence that Noah believed God and that he was he trusted that God was faithful to keep his word. What was the evidence? His what? His preparation. The Bible says he did something. He what? He, he took heed. And the evidence that he took heed was that he would diligently. What does diligence mean? Auntie, what does diligence mean? 
Pardon? Think, think, think. Yeah? Think. What does the word diligent mean? Okay, can you put it on the screen for us? Yeah? Look up the word diligent. Okay? You see, the, the, you see, whenever every word in the Bible has a meaning, there's a reason for everything. The word diligent is a very, you see, God chooses his words carefully. God is not careless with his words. Look at this. Let's look at it. It says what? Having or showing care and conscientiousness in one's work or duties. This is after diligent searching, he found a parcel. So industrious, hardworking, assiduous. Okay, if you look at more, there, there, there are a few more words. Okay, it says industrious, hardworking, assiduous, conscientious, particular, punctilious, okay, meticulous, painstaking, rigorous, exact, and careful, thorough, sedulous, attentive, heedful. Intent, earnest, studious. It is constant, persevering, persistent, tenacious, pertinacious, zealous, dedicated, committed, driven, active, busy, unflagging, and so on. Amen. All right. That's the word diligent. Okay. The Bible says, thank you very much indeed. It says he diligently what? Did what? And reverently. The word reverently means what? Anybody reverently? Pardon? The, the word reverently actually says it is respect, honor, but the fear of the Lord. Okay? The evidence that you fear God is that you obey Him. The evidence that you fear God is that you do what He asks you to do. Are we together? Yeah? So the Bible says that He diligently and reverently constructed and prepared an ark. For the deliverance of his own family. Hallelujah. So what did he do? The evidence that he indeed believed the prophetic word that came. Was that he went to begin to make what? Preparation. He began to plan and prepare. If you are not carefully, diligently, reverently constructing and preparing anything then you did not believe anything. Then you'll be what they said, people who heard the word in vain. Nothing. In vain. The Bible says, in vain did they hear the word because they did not mingle it with faith. How does anybody know that you believe the prophetic word. It is when you begin to put in preparation, construct, make all that needs to be in place. Preparation, planning, preparation, and a diligent attitude. Let me ask an important question. This is a blessing. Bless you. Are you making preparation for something right now? Do you believe that it's going to happen? And you're making preparation. Even before it happened, you began to make preparation because you believe it will happen. Let me ask a question. Since the beginning of the year, what preparations have you made? What did you begin to construct? Where is the plan? What is written? What is written down? Huh? What is constructed? What is the evidence? I'll read this quickly to you. Proverbs 24, verse 3 to 4 says, Through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, a life, a home, a family built. And by understanding, it is established 
on a sound and good foundation. And by knowledge shall the chambers of its every area be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. According to Mike Murdoch, it says, Champions plan. Planning is the starting point for any dream or goal that you possess. Any thing that you have believed God will do in your life. What is a plan? A plan is a written list of arranged actions necessary to achieve your desired goal. The Bible says in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 2, it says, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. I ask you this morning, why would God do anything different in your life? When you have not prepared for what he's going to do. I close this morning with this. Yeah. Isaiah 54. The Bible says. Isaiah 54 from verse 1. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bible says, sing, O barren one, you who did not bear. It says, break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who did not travail with child, for the spiritual children of the desolate one will be more than the children of the married wife, says the Lord. What do you call that statement? What is that statement? Uh-huh, yeah. Say, no, say what you said. What do you call it? Thank you. Don't be afraid. Yeah? That is a prophecy. That is a prophecy from God. That's a prophetic word from God. And listen, he is speaking, he says, sing. Huh? O barren one, you who did not bear. So he's saying that, you start singing. Start singing. Start rejoicing. Begin to celebrate. Begin to rejoice. Sing and cry aloud. You who did not travel with child, for the spiritual children of the desolate one will be more than the children of the married wife, says the Lord. If God has spoken it, then he will surely make it good because he is faithful. And the Lord said to me, you know, there's a way that we act that we tell the world that God is a liar. Because the people who don't believe God and do not respond and make preparation and adjustment and do not respond to that word, I say he's a liar. He won't do what he said. But the Bible says, let every man be a liar, but let God be what? True. By your actions, you can be saying to everybody, God is a liar. Forget him. He doesn't tell the truth. He just talks into the air. And the next verse now says, watch this, what does it say in the next verse? It says what? Enlarge the place of your tent. Let the curtains of your habitation be stretched out. Spare not. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. Next verse. It says why? For you will spread abroad to the right hand and to the left. And your offspring will possess the nations and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. What do you call that verse? Verse 3. What do you call it again? It's a prophetic word. So where is the planning and the preparation? Where is the evidence that a man, how do you know the man believed the prophetic word? Pardon? Verse 2 is the evidence that a man believes because he will enlarge the place of his tent that is, and let the curtains of your habitation be stretched out. That means that you must stretch yourself, nothing spared. Now, it says what? Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. Why? Because for he who must get God's highest, he must give his what? Utmost. If you're believing God for his highest in your life, you cannot expect God to give you your highest and, and then you're prepared to do nothing. 
And you say, God, you're going to, I know you're going to increase me. You would, but you have not made room to what? Receive what he has promised. Let us rise up. Hallelujah. Was God talking to anybody here this morning? Is God speaking to anybody in this place? In years to come, you, can, you will probably be rejoicing that you heard this word and you heeded it. Or a person can be weeping and saying, why did I not hear that word? Your actions will choose, will determine which one you will be. Let us rise upon our feet. Hallelujah. What would be a reasonable prayer right now? Huh? God, ha, huh? I need your help. Eh? Deliver me from unbelief. Eh? Deliver me, Lord God, eh? from every satanic and demonic unbelief, Lord God. You see, because when a man believes that God is true to his word, it affects and impacts everything in his life father this morning in the name of jesus darling are you coming are you going to lead us in prayer you have been listening to a message recorded from the redeemed christian church of god international christian center chadwa Eath. if you need copies of this message please call the church office on 0208 859 00789 or 0208-59-77-111 or email us at media at icc-rccg.org Please find further details about this ministry at www.icc-rccg.org God bless.